Hey guys, what's happening? Online arbitrage or wholesale? Which model should you start selling on Amazon with? My name is Andre Kreisbergs. In this video, guys, I'm going to explain to you what exactly um, you need to know about those two models, which model I recommend to begin with um, as a beginner, which model is more profitable, and um, you know why you should consider one model versus another one to you know to get started selling on Amazon okay in case you guys don't know my name is Andre Kreisbergs once again a full-time Amazon eBay seller uh, been in this business guys for 10 years almost 10 years guys absolutely crazy and if you're looking to start selling on Amazon FBA I do have a free guide for you all you got to do is comment word guide below this video and I will send one across to you but you got to go and do it right now I actually made a new brand new free guide and you're gonna absolutely uh, love it guys okay but in this video we're going to talk about online arbitrage and wholesale please like and subscribe to my youtube channel to this video it's super important guys to help me rank up my videos a lot higher and bring me more motivation on the shooting this type of content for you and talk more about selling on amazon talk more about reselling products online and etc okay guys so online arbitrage and wholesale first of all guys what is the difference okay online arbitrage is when you're sourcing products from the online retailers you're physically going to the online retail uh, sorry you don't go to physically to online retailers you go you go there on your laptop like your laptop your computer from your phone whatever guys you're buying products online to flip them back on amazon what is retail arbitrage retail arbitrage is when you're physically going into the stores that's why if you're living in uk or us okay now when it gets down to wholesale wholesale is very similar you're still flipping the same products like you're still flipping the brands on Amazon, but you're buying them from wholesalers and distributors rather than from the retailers, okay? So you're buying them from the actual official resellers, so you can go back and flip them back on Amazon. That's the difference, okay? Now, which model um, is better? Like, what strategy is better to sell on, and uh, what are the advantages, disadvantages, pros and cons, okay? When it gets down to online arbitrage, this model is definitely the easiest to begin in terms of the capital, in terms of everything, okay? So if you have a lot, like very little money to start with, and I do assume a lot of you guys that are watching this video, like my followers um, from, from anywhere, guys, Facebook, YouTube, Telegram, doesn't matter, guys, whatever you found me from, guys, TikTok maybe, which will be amazing, okay? You're probably looking to start selling on Amazon, you have a very little budget to begin with, okay? For you, if you're living in UK or US, you can do, go and do retail arbitrage, which is physically going around the stores and scanning for products for the flip deals to actually go and resell on Amazon, okay? Now, if you don't have a lot of like, if you don't have a lot of time on your hands, you can go and do online arbitrage, which is basically doing the same thing, but buying things online. The advantage of retail arbitrage versus online arbitrage is this, okay? Retail, you'll be able to find like products that are not necessarily listed online. Things like clearance products, like, you know, rollbacks and etc. You'll be able to go actually go and pull up a lot of products on a discount that way doing retail arbitrage, but you have to physically go um, in the actual stores and look for products that way. If you do online arbitrage, you can't do that. But again, online arbitrage is something you can start with a very minimum amount of money, like $50 a pound if you really want to. I recommend to have a couple hundreds to start doing online arbitrage. Wholesale, you need at least two, three thousand to begin. That's my recommendation, guys. Okay, simply because most wholesalers offer MOQ, which stands for minimum order quantity. Okay, so most wholesalers will not sell you less than 500 or 1,000 pounds or dollars. Okay. Depending where you're selling from, okay? Because I know I have a mixed audience on my YouTube channel, guys. That's why I'm always referencing to uh, USD and GBP. I know most of you guys are probably watching me from UK, Europe, and etc. But yeah, guys, just so you understand, okay? So you need to have money to be able to buy products um, in, like, you, you need to be able to buy, um, make like two free purchases, okay? So you must have like enough budget to make like two free purchases from different wholesalers. Otherwise, what's the point? If you just have flat 500 or 1,000, you won't be able to rebuy your stock quickly enough and etc. And that's the difference between arbitrage and wholesale. Now, if you're a beginner, of course, doing all an arbitrage is a lot easier in terms of actually getting and finding the product. Because when you're going to the online retailers, all you gotta do is flip, you know, find the deals. You can use different methods, okay? I teach a lot of different methods um, on how to source for products inside of my FB Mastery program, which I haven't actually mentioned, uh, which I should have done. It, this is my step-by-step -step program. I also offer School of Amazon, but yeah, you can check out all the links guys below, FB Mastery program and School of Amazon. That's my uh, intense program, which comes out in launches. So FB Mastery program is the one I have for a lifetime. And School of Amazon is um, like an intense program Program, which which is happening like three four times per year and it's available only per launch okay but more information guys below i teach and i coach and yeah so there's different methods um, you can go and use uh, manual method you can use automated method you can use you can use a reverse search method which is finding products for other sellers and etc okay with wholesale 
you have to go um, and obtain an actual account with the wholesalers, which is a little bit of a work to do. And then after this, you typically receive a price list from a wholesaler. Then you scan the prices and look for the profitable products. And then you make purchases. It's a lot harder to find products through wholesalers that way. Now, on the other hand, when we're talking about online arbitrage and wholesale, when you're comparing them, yeah, you need less money. It's, um, you know, it's easier to begin doing online arbitrage versus wholesale. However, you need to understand that the easiest something it is to do, okay, like online arbitrage, is super easy to start, is super easy to do. You probably understand that there's going to be more competition in this business model. When something has an easier access point, it has more people, it has more saturation and etc. That's why people move into wholesale, okay? They move into wholesale to be less saturated, to be less competitive, and they also, they actually go and scale this business a lot faster by doing replenishable type of business. What exactly do I mean? This is actually another point I will talk about in a second, but first, um, let me remind you guys that you need to go and comment word guide right now below this video if you wanna receive my free step-by-step -step Amazon FB guide to start selling on Amazon. Also, guys, if you're learning a lot, if you're getting value, please like this video and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys. This is very, very important and essential for me, guys. I really appreciate you guys if you can do it for me, okay? Now, when it gets down to wholesale, when we're doing wholesale, okay, like I already mentioned that arbitrage, um, you need, it's, it's more competitive and etc. But when it gets down to replenishing products, arbitrage, you typically be able to go and buy like you'd be able to buy same product in a lesser quantity than wholesale. That's one thing. And usually unlikely you'll be able to get the same product for the same price you purchased before. That way you won't be able to replenish the same product over and over again. With wholesale, it's like 90-10. So in arbitrage, it's like 90-10 other way around. What do I mean? So 10% of the inventory that you, um, uh, there's, a, there's like a 10% chance you'll be able to rebuy the inventory that you already bought before again. Okay, in our, in wholesale, there is 90% of the chance, okay? Simply because on all online arbitrage, the price is changing, okay? The price is changing a lot at the online retailers. And, um, you know, the simply item can just go out of stock. Product can just go out of stock at Walmart, product can go out of stock at Argus and etc. With wholesale, wholesales usually have the stock, they hold the stock because they are reselling the same line to the consumers over and over again. So wholesale, it's easy to scale and it's easy to replenish and grow business from that perspective, okay? So yeah, it's absolutely, I absolutely recommend, steaming hot over here, crazy guys, hey UK, finally hot weather. So yeah, um, you know, when it gets down to uh, replenishing business and actually scaling something, um, I recommend um, obviously going to wholesale, which requires more work to begin, but it do, it is more scalable, it is more growing. In terms of the profit margin, which um, which uh, model is more profitable? Would you say? Okay, I I'll tell you straight and simple. Okay, um, people ask like, oh, which model has more ROI? Which model has more margin? Okay, it's more or less the same. The difference is that a lot of the products that you can go and buy online arbitrage way, which is from the retailers, you won't be able to go and source wholesale, vice versa. So the profitability, the actual uh, profit that you're getting is the same. The ROI and margin is the same, but the products are different because one product is going to be sold at retail, you know, online, and some products are going to be sold um, at the wholesale, okay? This is the, that's the main difference, okay? You need to understand that, okay? But the margin, I'll tell you, is going to be anywhere from like 10 to 20%. ROI is going to be anywhere from 15 to 30%. Uh, 30% or 40%. Of course, you can get individual products and making way more ROI and way more profit and way more margin. Like, of course you can do that. But the different, the, the, you know, the thing is that the average is average because we have the average um, kind of a margin, average kind of a ROI in this industry that you have to go and simply follow. Okay. So online arbitrage, easy to access, less investment needed, but it's more saturated. And um, yeah, like I've said, Anyone can go and start doing it. Wholesale, you need more things. On top of everything, for wholesale, you need to be a company, okay? Like arbitrage, you can start as individual in US. In UK, you have to be like a sole trader or company anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But for wholesale specifically, you need a company. In, New in America, you need LLC plus a resale certificate, EIN number. In UK, it's better to have a company plus be VAT registered and etc. Just to so kind of mix uh, the work easy and life easier to work and actually register with the actual wholesalers, okay? That's if you want to be doing the actual wholesale model. So it's a bit more work to be put in, but it definitely it's more rewarding in the long term if you want to put it this way, okay? But yeah, besides that, I mean, I would say for every beginner, if you're starting out, if you're watching this video, you need to go and start doing online arbitrage, get your feet wet. You can stick to it if you really want to, and you can definitely grow it, but you'll be able to grow it to a certain level, maybe one or two K pounds of dollars per month profit. And then you want to venture, 
into wholesale after this you want to have the you know the um, you know different moq you, you know you have to follow the you know the moq of the suppliers you have to go and follow the actual um you know different things that wholesalers will ask you to do and the actual business model will ask you to do so it's just an extra two or three steps that you have to follow if you want to be doing wholesale versus arbitrage you got to put in the work and yeah of course it's better to outsource and have a virtual assistant to be looking for those wholesalers make the contacts reaching out calling and etc and that's what i recommend doing guys but of course again i teach all this stuff guys in my fb mastery program i teach all of this stuff in my school of amazon i teach how to outsource and etc you can always reach out to me guys check out my links below guys if you are if you are interested as well okay make sure to like this video guys this is super important make sure to comment word guide below this video as well comment word guide if you're interested to get my free step-by-step -step guide to start selling on amazon and yeah guys if you have any questions if i haven't covered something here you know do let me know. I definitely haven't talked about like payments and stuff because all on arbitrage, you'll face more issues with like payments and uh, cancellations um, and etc. If you buy from like US vendors, if you're from abroad and etc. But those are like very small details which we're not going to touch in today's video, guys, because I really wanted to just give um, a more of an observation. Both strategies are great. You just have to go and start with one and then move into another one or just stay at one, okay? I don't recommend doing both of them at the same time. That's my recommendation, guys. Do one versus another one. That's my recommendation, guys, okay? Don't forget to like this video, guys. Don't forget to comment word guide to check out my mentor links below as well as on social media. Follow me, guys, on Instagram. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully you found this video useful and I'll be speaking to you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.